What's good everyone? My name is Akechi from the Demise team. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to ledge trap with Ken and Ryu. Now, guys, I am a Ken main, but today I'm going to show you guys a lot of cool Ryu stuff that I do learn whenever I fight other Ryu players and how to, you know, use stuff for Ken as well. Now, I will say ledge trapping is Ken and Ryu's strongest aspect in this game. Sure, we have the combos and everything, but once you knock someone off the stage, Things really go down, and that's when we have to make sure your opponent is scared the most, okay? Once you get someone off the stage, that's when we want your opponent, opponent to fear the fact that you're on the stage, okay? They want to get the neutral back, but you're going to be able to fight them and make sure they don't get the neutral. And if they do get the neutral, you can easily just offset it again and then make sure you just keep punishing them, keeping them at the ledge for as long as you can and to make sure you can kill them or, like, you know, just continue and build up damage from combos and everything. Anyways, so first off, I'm going to teach you guys what ledge trapping is. So ledge trapping, I'm gonna move Ken back over here. When you wanna grab the ledge first off, right? When you recover, you grab the ledge like that, okay? You can get up, do a regular get up. You can jump onto the stage. You can roll onto the stage and you can attack. But you also have one more option that many people do where you jump off and do an attack onto the stage, okay? That's not too hard to understand. You can also do specials onto the stage like that, like Kadoken. It's not too hard to understand. It's a pre pretty easy concept. And what you're gonna have to be careful is all of those options, all five of those options <clears throat> are gonna have to be in your head. You're gonna have to understand, okay, well, my opponent might jump here. He might roll here. He might, um, you know, stand up here, do a get up attack or, you know, attack from with an aerial or whatever, right? So you have to memorize all of that stuff when you're trying to go up and fight your opponent. And the main thing you have to do when ledge trapping is condition your opponent, okay? Now conditioning is very important with Ken and Ryu because a lot of their stuff, they suffer when they get in, right? But let's say for example, collarbone breaker right here, this move conditions people to stop shielding because once you add enough like shield pressure or break a shield, people would be fearing to shield against you, right? Conditioning is basically getting in your opponent's head, okay? So now with that said, I'm going to show you guys some cool stuff. Alright, so one thing Ken and Ryu have that other characters in this game don't have is the fact that they're able to automatically face their opponent. You guys saw that right there? I automatically just face wherever Ken, Ken jump over me. There we go. Automatically face wherever Ken goes, and Ken automatically faces wherever I go. Alright? Cool thing about that is, so, if I do an attack, like down tilt, Ken can just jump over me while I'm doing this. I'll just move a little closer. Jump over me, Ken. Or stop rolling into me, Ken. <laughs> Yo, jump over me, jeez, okay. There we go. Hold on. He's gonna come back. He's being real difficult. See, I automatically turn around and catch him. You guys saw that right there? So, for example, let's say someone rolls onto the ledge and I'm doing this, I automatically can catch them if they roll onto the ledge. Now, if you space it properly, let me turn him off a of run real quick. He's being really annoying. <laughs> so, if I turn, um, and I space myself properly, like let's say right here, I can, I'll say right here is actually a lot better. I can catch them with my down tilt, even the, but. If I want to reach the ledge from here, I'm going to have to do the heavy version of down tilt, right? But I can catch them with all versions of down tilt at this spot, and I can dodge a lot of getup attacks from there, too. So that's a, this is a safe spot, right? So a very cool thing about knowing your safe spots and everything is, for example, I'm going to knock um, Ken off and show you guys why Hadoken can help set up a ledge trap. So I can force mash Ken off. See that right there? Now, basically, yeah, his recovery got clipped. But the cool thing is, as soon as he grabs the ledge, Hadoken will basically be over his head. So you can't make an immediate option. That will give me time to place myself wherever I want to place myself and condition my opponent to, oh, you can't grab the ledge there or whatever, right? And I can lead into whatever combo I want um, following that. All right, so first off, I'm gonna give you guys some good examples of like what to counter, how to counter every single option of getting off the ledge, basically. So forward smash, get Ken off. Ken can just recover from there. Okay, look, you can put up tilts here and catch your opponent. Hold on. I did it wrong right there, my bad. If you place up tilt here, on the first um, clip of up tilt, if you catch your opponent on it, down air is a true combo, it's confirmed. So what happens there is if you buffer the jump after the first hit, you immediately just go ahead for a spike. And you have to react to this because don't try to go brain dead, right? And then forget, oh crap, I already hit him once. Because if you hit him twice, he falls too far. They fall too far away from it. But one time, leads into a spike. One time leads into a, a beautiful spike. Alright, next up. So if they roll onto the stage, I can't really show you guys that because I can't control two controllers at once and everybody here um, at school with me sucks at Smash. No, I'm kidding. Not everybody sucks, but they're just not either available or like too good. So, um, 
catching a roll, you want to do down tilt, right? Because it has a lot of range. So now they can't really get up and they want to, let's say, roll, right? If they're not smart, they'll roll. Okay, now, but if they are smart, they'll jump. And we'll get to what you do for people who are going to jump over the down tilt. So when you catch somebody with a roll, you can keep spamming down tilt. And what happens is I automatically turn around, right? And I can just go ahead and put in like a show you can... Sorry. Ooh, my hands are my hands aren't warmed up. There you go. You know, just put in the show where you can after you see the down to connects. Okay, it's a true combo. It literally links up. So as soon as you see them cat get caught once, even twice, it works. There we go. Uh yeah, you can do it twice and then land it. Sorry, my bad. I literally got back from class. My hands are like <laughs> still tired. All right, so yeah, you can do two tilts and then confirm it in case you want to like you know. But let's say your reaction time isn't too good, right? You can already do just do another down tilt. Just to make sure you know it connected and you can hit them with the Shoryuken. So they try to cross you over, you can attack them with Shoryuken, and if they're at like 90%, that's a free kill. Alright, so let's say your opponent jumps over you, right? What are you gonna do with Ryu? Because Ryu's Shoryuken doesn't have as much strength. Sorry, that was the weaker version of Shoryuken. Doesn't have as much strength on the last hit up top, right? Unlike Ken's. With Ken, if someone jumps over, you can automatically just do that and you clip them and you can probably kill them like at, I say 90, 80 something percent up top. Now, let's say someone tried to jump over you with Ryu, right? What you're gonna do is you wanna jump back, alright? Literally get out of your down tilt spam, jump back and clip them like that and then go in for a show where you can. For example, I'll, I'll throw the um, computer upwards. Hold on. Like that. All right, you just cancel the, the up air into a Shoryuken and it can kill at not too high percents, but it does a lot of knockback, all right? And it's a really good way to seal the kill with Ryu because Ryu really doesn't have any other way of like killing up above above him in the air like that. So Shoryuken in the air after an up air is a really good way to confirm it. Now let's say your opponent does a get up attack, okay? Get up attack with Ryu is way easier than with Ken because Ken's get up attack counters are just trash. <laughs> and I'll get into that later when I play Ken and show you guys uh, how to break it down with him. So if someone does a get up attack on you, right? Um, let's say you're spamming up tilts at the ledge and they're like, oh crap, okay, I'm gonna just smack you out the way because you're being annoying basically, right? Get up attack can be countered with focus attack. And that's because get up attack only does one hit, all right? And any level of focus attack this focus attack, as it gets stronger, as look, one, two, see, it's two, three levels to it. First level is the automatic, just press and release. After you blink yellow once, that's level two. And after you blink again, and then you charge all the way, that's level three, right? Cool thing about focus attack is you can take any hit of get up, get up attack at any level, right? So let's say someone hits you in the middle of the first focus attack. Then you can hit them immediately and counter them and send them off the stage again. Now they have to find a new option. All right, and let me tell you something. They're not gonna get up attack you again unless they're crazy, all right? They're not gonna do that again. So your next options are, you have four different options. Now, if your opponent has a get up where they can, um, a, what's it called? An attack off the ledge that's like a multi-hit, back up, all right? Cause they're, they're gonna go through your focus attack and focus attack can only eat up one move, okay? Like one hit, all right? So if they hit you twice, like a multi-hit move, it's gonna cancel and you're gonna take damage. So um, what you wanna do here with focus attack, right? You charge it, hit them, back up, and then forward smash. Okay? So if they're at a kill percent, you can literally charge it, back up, forward smash. Cool thing about that, man. So with Ken, he has no range with forward smash. But Ryu has so much range with his forward smash, it literally all you gotta do is back up and push him um and hit him with the focus attack. I mean the focus uh, with the uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> All you have to do with Ryu is um hit him with a smash attack after you back up. Now this is the problem with Ken. If Ken backs up, he has a short forward smash, and you don't want to push forward because, hold on. If you push forward, sometimes they, they like, just fall off the ledge, right? But sometimes, like, you know, a regular getup gets them to stand, like, right here-ish. So let's say you can hit them there. They won't really fall off, but it's, like, so close to falling off. You just don't want to go for it. And I believe, I don't know if sure you can... Okay, you can barely make it back for sure you can <laughs> at that point. So, yeah, it still works, okay? But just go for the... Focus that back up and hit him with the forward smash because I do think it confirms right into like the sweet spot. Yeah, it hits right into the sweet spot just to make sure. I had to confirm. I don't play Ryu as much. <laughs> now, a um, no. Now I mentioned earlier that Hadouken is really good for clipping people when they're recovering because what happens is if you time it properly, you can clip them on the like recovering right, and they recover too much over the ledge. 
You can also clip them on the regular getup. And what happens is the move would trip them off the stage immediately. Let me see if I can get Ken to trip off when he does a regular getup. As you guys saw there, I hit him immediately with it and he fell off, but you can also manage to clip them on their back. Like as the move is within them, they can fall over. Now I also forgot one thing to mention. So if you do the input Hadouken, sorry, input Hadouken like that, you can get the bigger version which has a bigger hitbox. And I think it, yeah, it does a little bit more damage, but the cool thing is the hitbox can clip them easier. So if you feel like you can go ahead and do um, the input, go ahead and do it. I prefer to use the smaller version because it's fast, well not faster to like in, in terms of like the speed in the game, but it's easier and faster to do because you're just tapping in this out, right? But if you're really fast, you can just go ahead and do it, do the input and then click the button. But just pressing one button and doing the same moves, when the movement is not that crucial, I mean, yeah, I just go ahead and press it myself. And if you guys don't know this already, if you hold Hadouken, you get the faster version. If you press and release really fast, hold on, you press and release really fast, you get the slower version, right? So... If you want to like, let's say you're too far away, right? You want to clip them still. You can shoot the faster one to catch up. If you're really close and you want to like mess with them and have a really long lasting hitbox is slowly making their way towards them, click the slower one, all right? Because honestly, just mixing it up can honestly mess up with your opponent as well. Because let me tell you how many times someone tries to perfect shield, or not perfect shield, to count, to parry my Hadouken, and then, you know, I mix it up and send the slower one or a faster one, and they're like, what the? Because people don't know that, all right? People just don't know the mix up. So it's a really good thing to keep in mind. Now with Ryu, I did say Hadoken's good to clip and everything, right? But he has a Shakunetsu Hadoken. All right, that's something Ken does not have. So Shakunetsu Hadoken, basically, what it does is it has five hits, does a pretty good amount of damage, 11.2%. And the cool thing is, it doesn't disappear on shield. So if someone somehow manages to shield your Hadoken, Shakunetsu Hadoken keeps hitting their shield. Okay. And cool thing with Ryu is after that, you can go ahead and hit them with a collarbone breaker, which literally breaks shield after any move you do onto shield. Aside from, I think, one down tilt. One, like, down tilt and up tilt don't do as much damage to the shield, but I think you have to like do like three before a collarbone breaks it, right? So, collarbone literally adds more pressure onto that shield and just keep messing with them, all right? So, Shakunetsu, oh, also Shakunetsu can clip them, knock them off the stage, but can also clip them when they regularly get, doing a regular getup and make them miss an input or make them miss a lot of things, man. It's honestly really good, all right? It's a really good, I, it's, I would say it's better than Hadoken. I actually will stick by that. And also, like I mentioned earlier, you can do the slower version and you can do the faster version. All right, guys, so now I'm playing the boy Ken, all right? Now, Ken, ledge trapping is a monster, all right? <laughs> There's a lot of things that Ryu doesn't have that I love with Ken with his ledge trapping. For example, the roundhouse kick input that you can cancel after down tilt. That's literally so disgusting because what happens is it does so much um, shield damage, right? It knocks your opponent away if they do put up shield. Let's say they roll behind you, right? And somehow they get to put their shield up on time, right? Because yes, there is... Hold on. Yeah. There is some time where the move isn't out, but it's pretty small. But let's say that somehow they manage to get through, right? If you hit the shield and you do um, roundhouse kick, roundhouse kick, the second part, does so much damage, just ridiculous. All right? So keep that in mind. So it does a lot of shield pressure in case you missed it, and also does kill, all right? So if you can manage to throw out roundhouse kick perfectly, it does kill. Now... Jumping, cool fact, <laughs> Ken Shoryuken, the strongest part is the last hit. So someone jumps, it literally clips them up, clips them right there. So let's say you do it down to it right here, right? If you know, if you feel like your opponent's going to jump and you want to watch them jump to the time off the Shoryuken properly, literally one flick and you're in the perfect position. One flick and you're in the perfect position. You just go ahead and Shoryuken input. But right there, like I said earlier, my hands are a bit too tired and like I'm just tired myself. But literally, you can just clip them like that. Simple. You need, if you want to get two flicks behind because you think like, oh, you're not in a safe place, it's good because Ken literally has such a good dash dance. It's ridiculous. So literally, just go ahead and do two flicks and then show you can them. Now I did mention that Ken's focus attack is just trash, right? But you can do some pretty cool things out of it. So let's say someone get up attacks and you focus attack them, right? Focus attack, and then once you're like in front of them, right? Because they didn't fall off. So let's say luckily they didn't fall off. You can just go into jab, jab, NLG, into forward smash. And it kills. All right? That's literally, it kills at, that was 60%, guys. So let me see um how much lower it can kill. I don't know what percent is confirmed to kill at. But yeah, look how far he flew into the blast zone. Ken literally has some good pressure. And that's not a true combo, but 
your opponent most likely at the ledge will try to hold in because they, they don't want to fly too far right so you can go ahead and try that but if your opponent's flying like holding back you can clearly see it jump and spike them literally go ahead and jump and spike them another thing that you can do right let's say you're doing down tilts you've been doing down tilts or you want to pressure your opponent and let's say that you're waiting for a regular getup right perfectly position that forward tilt perfectly position this forward tilt right and it leads right into a spike leads right into a beautiful spike at almost all percents it literally has low knockback bro that was an ugly that was an ugly one <laughs> but yeah it confirms it to a spike at like almost all percents it has no knockback growth and at higher percents it'll kill them for sure both ken and ryu both had that light forward tilt as well just so you guys know i didn't show it with ryu i totally forgot but both ken and ryu had that move now let's say somebody wants to roll behind you right even though you're doing down tilts or you just pressure them to like let them have a free roll now ken has this really good combo that a lot of people in my discord have taught me how to do because it's insane where you just jump up right time it with the roll jump up and let's say they shield there because most people would shield if they roll in because they want to play defensive and check if they can get out safely jump up hit their shield right and make sure you hold a because now ken will do the close proximity um i'll call it heavy up tilt so all i gotta do is hold a and they'll do heavy up tilt right and as soon as you do that, do roundhouse kick input. And that's going to break the crap out of their shield or it's going to poke their shield so bad. And literally, they can't get out of it. It's a confirmed hit, all right? Either their shield breaks or you confirm a um, shield poke. Now, let's say you have a platform here, like on Battlefield. I don't usually play with platforms. I'm not too good unless I'm on Pokemon Stadium because that's my favorite stage where I'm, like, the best at. But let's say there's a platform, like, right here on Battlefield, which, you know, it's usually at. And someone wants to jump and get on that platform and probably try to, like, use it to get even further, right? Okay. Well, now that you're doing the down tilts, right, and you see that they jumped. For example, Ken has a really good up air um, setup. I can think it kills earlier than 80. I'm going to show it to you guys. Like that. But I did the weaker version. Ooh. Where are my confirms at? Like that. There we go. So yeah, that killed really early. Now we kill even earlier than 75, right? So I want you guys to know that basically if someone tries to jump over you and try to fake you out and you didn't react on time, just literally run, hold back, jump, and do the input of sure you can in the air. And make sure you double tap the um double tap A to get the medium version because the medium version kills earlier. And it takes a lot of practice because honestly, a lot of us are used to holding A, but just double tap it and you get the medium version, all right? So you don't want the heavy the heavy version with the fire because basically it doesn't have as much knockback in the air as medium. So medium will kill at like 60, 75%. Medium, um, Ryu has a lot of weight on him actually. I think he's like a medium heavyweight type-ish character and I can kill him at 75%. I can even kill him even earlier than that. So imagine like small characters or whatever. You clip them with that up air, they're dead. Simple. Alright guys, so one last thing that I forgot to mention before I end the video, whenever someone's trying to recover onto stage, and let's say you hit them with a getup attack or you've already countered their um, regular getup, now they're going to be scared because let's say they don't have a multi-hit aerial, right? All they can do now is jump, because once you do focus attack, they can literally either hold the stage, hold the ledge, right? But if they hold the ledge for too long, just cancel focus attack into a down smash, right? But let's say you're holding focus attack and they try to roll behind you. Focus attack allows you to turn the move around and catch somebody with it. Now with Ken, it's not as good as Ryu's because Ryu has more um, distance, right? But, let's put him back over here. For example, you hit him with it, cancel it, go into Shoryuken, or you can just hit him with it, cancel it, up tilt into Shoryuken, like, hold on, whoo, that was so bad. <laughs> up tilt into Shoryuken, I don't know why it's not coming out. Hit him with it, jab, jab, Shoryuken. Let me try up tilt to show you can just show you guys. Yeah, it's a thing. There we go. Yeah, you can just easily combo after that, right? So focus attack isn't even. It's literally a move where you gotta mess with your opponent's head. Okay, if you feel like your opponent's going to jump in and hit you with something, right? You can focus attack them like that. It's like a soft counter, all right, that you can control and follow up after. It's kind of cool. It's really cool. <laughs> it's really cool, guys. So, anyways, um, I'm done with the video here. Honestly, I think I've gone through everything that you can do with Ken and Ryu. For ledge trapping there are a lot more things they can try doing back airs or if you want to be flashy you can do the rising dragon technique to catch somebody jumping which i don't know why anyone would use that but let's say they tried to like let's say you're here and someone tries to get onto the ledge i mean on the platform above i guess you can rise up and catch them with it but yeah i've gone through pretty much everything you can do um on the tutorial there 
All right, guys, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Go ahead and check my channel out. It should be in the description and in the comment section below. Go ahead and check out all the other Smash players who are in Demise who are way more relevant than I am as of right now, like ZD and Seagull. Um, we've played Wolf. Seagull's a really good Wolf, and ZD's a very good Fox. So anyways, guys, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Ooh.